consider supporting Arceus Hoop on Patreon for as little as a dollar per month. Link available in video description. Thank you. Hello, and welcome back to another Digging the Game. In this series, we play computer games as archaeologists. And today, I'm returning to Zelda Breath of the Wild for part 7 of our series examining the archaeology of this game. Today, specifically, I want to examine the archaeology of the Zonai people, the mysterious Zonai people typified by the Zonai ruins in the Faron region of, uh, of Hyrule, of the world map. So here we are, broadly speaking, well it's the Faron Tower I've just jumped off in fact, in the Faron region. And specifically I'm going to start here on this uh, Kamha, Kama, sorry, plateau, because it is uh, just, just sort of a, 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 on one of the offshoots of that plateau, where I think we get a bit of an insight into the mysterious nature of the Zonai people. These statues here, slightly bird-like, I think, in some respects. You have these, the beaks, almost with uh, uh, glasses, uh, sort of uh, emphasized eyes there, f uh, a, a, a collar-like garment, or maybe a hint of folded wings, certainly on the right-hand statue there, and talons clutching uh, the the perches on which they're sitting. These Zonai people maybe were bird-like or possibly venerated uh, flying creatures. In fact, when we look at the back, it looks as though they're wearing hoods, perhaps, robes uh, with their wings protruding from underneath those robes. Now, that's not unheard of in, in the, the, the broader realms of Legend of Zelda computer games. In uh, the... Um, uh, Wind Waker, for example, you have bird people there who are not dissimilar to what we see here. But also, I would, I would, I would humbly submit at this juncture that the look of those faces on the statues are very reminiscent of a particular item that you can get in Zelda: Twilight Princess. In that game, there is the uh, the hawk eye. Hawkeye goggles, is it? Actually, I've got, I've got had some notes written here, just just uh, just in case. Hawkeye binocular mask. That's it. The Hawkeye mask, which paired with uh, a bow, a bow and arrow in the game, allows you to have have a, a zoomed-in perspective, almost like a sniper bow. And that seemingly, it looks as though that was made by humans in that game, not by particular people. I don't know if this is a callback to that, or if or if that mask is a callback to these or if there's some sort of connection that, that, that's been in the back of the minds of, of the designers of uh, Breath of the Wild and, uh, and broader Zelda titles. But I think these statues are a little hint at something of these mysterious people. I also like the, the, the idea that they're actually grinning at you. Uh, they could be sort of moustaches or something like that or maybe the, 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 the face protruding towards a beak maybe. On, uh, on these statues, but it also looks like a big toothy grin, actually. If we sort of if we just zoom in there, you can see these big teeth. <laughs> I quite like it. So, the Zonai, they are mysterious. And as we were looking at in the previous episode with the ancient Hylians, it looks as though Zonai ruins and this sort of quasi-Mayan sort of sensibility, in fact, which we've looked at in part four of this series on Breath of the Wild, uh, is is not only uh, is a signature, but also it seems that the, the two cultures were drawn to one another. Uh, and it looks as though the Zonai people built around uh, the pre the initial ancient Hylian structures, such as the the Spring of Power and this kind of thing. And then eventually, you had uh, ancient Hylians <laughs> again turning up and building. Uh, occasionally temples and the like uh, in places that, that that sprung out of 
of that initial exploration. So there's some sort of intertwined relationship. It looks as though in different places, either the Zonite or the ancient Hylians got there first, as it were. I was going to have to deal with this guy here. There we go. Now, today I'm wearing my uh, lovely glow-in-the-dark uh, skeleton costume. Hopefully you'll get a chance to see the skeleton glowing. But also, uh, on this plateau, we also see another feature of the Zonai architecture, and that's these squares, or these, um, uh, again, sort of rectilinear, I'm pulling on that word once more, uh, these, square, these square constructions that are usually based around four s uh, small pillars joined with, with small uh, four small walls joining those pillars and in the middle there's often nothing actually occasionally you'll find a treasure chest or or some fruit that's been that's come to rest in the middle of these structures but they're they're all over the place now in this instance we have two uh well actually more than two we have one two uh th well three so there's one almost buried here three Four, uh, and inside this, if I use the um, no, sorry, my mistake. If I use the uh, stasis rune, I can knock it off. Let it build up some power, and it goes flying away. Ah! Oh. <laughs> okay, try again. Let it, let it recharge. Oh. There we go. And hit it. There we go. There, well, that's enough. Oh, okay, big hearty radish in the middle of this one. So this is number four. Uh, any more? Four. Just one over here. No, this is a series of pillar blocks and again another short sort of curtain wall that abruptly breaks off here. I I can't really think of an, uh, an adequate explanation for the relationship between uh, these squares, shall we call them, Zonai squares, and the uh, these statues. However, these Zonai squares do appear around the pillars in the Guccini Plain Barrows. We also looked at that in, in part four, uh, where I tentatively made the connection between the Zonai, no, sorry, the, um, the Pharon Forest and whoever was building there and the Guccini, Guccini Plains. In fact, we can see them just over there in the distance. There's one there. And at the bottom of these, of these pillars, we have, uh, as part of the barrow, these squares as well. So perhaps actually what we're seeing here is initial stages of that burial, right? Maybe these are our initial burials, potentially, given that this is the only other place that we've really seen this square structure. Maybe these are uh, lower people who are lower down in, in, the, in the social order, or maybe even higher up in the social order, given that they are buried in close proxi proxima proximity, proximation? proximity to these two statues over here. Again, it's one of those things where they are mysterious, and, and they are also, as well, we have to acknowledge, they are designed to be mysterious. The Zonai, uh, as we saw in um, Creating a Champion, in the book where the map, the geography is laid out, history written in the geography of the game, uh, they're specifically described as mysterious. We have another plateau area here, again, with a curtain wall, with periodic square pillars, and more square structures although i'm not inclined to land here because we have a uh whiz robe over there with his lightning rod he'll he'll mess my day up for sure um but one thing that i would like to take a look at just before we we move on is actually the different sizes of pillars as well that we have here and also the fact that, that these pillars don't seem to be related to larger structures in the context of the ancient hylian ruins that we were looking at uh, last time, something this big is almost always part of uh, a, a corridor of uh, of pillars or part of a, a structure that actually has walls leading you somewhere. Whereas these large chunks, they seem to be 
almost punctuating the natural landscape as opposed to making a statement within it, if that makes sense. In this instance, for example, here, these two huge, almost buttresses that seem to have these, these really rather large uh, revetments, almost giant steps, I guess, leading up onto what is another little plane or platform in the Faron uh, woodlands forest, rainforest area. I uh, I suspect that we're probably looking at, at people who lived within the landscape. And, and by that I mean to say, of course, we all live within the landscape. But people who saw this, this valley as a series of natural structures that they augmented. And the closest analogy I can come to uh, in just you know, the, no, sorry, the, the first analogy that I can uh, that I think of rather is actually the world of um, J.R.R. Tolkien and Lord of the Rings and elves who were mar demarked in their relationship to the world uh, as being different from mankind because they built essentially within trees, within forests. They didn't try to limit what nature wanted to do. Instead, they worked in harmony with it. And also as well, there's an echo within those pillars of the of the eventual fate of these trees. I mean, look at the size of this tree. It has no no flowering branches. Oh, it's got hit by a, by a goat. has no flowering branches anymore. It's clearly at the end, or the, the, the last third of its life, as it were. Uh, with a couple of a couple of smaller branches protruding from the sides, I guess, but at the top, certainly it's seen better days. Uh, and in that sense, it looks a little bit like one of those giant stone pillars. Maybe what they're doing is that they are echoing the life cycle of the tree and the ultimate destiny of the tree to become a sort of a pillar of the forest. It's hard to say, but what we can say though is that they didn't they don't seem to mind or didn't seem to to to, to to be that concerned about the ultimate destiny of these monuments. This one here has fallen over and is seemingly actually has been pushed over arguably by this tree. Maybe we have a, a cycle being enacted where uh, the the people who, because the Faron region in all the Zelda games, Faron is always connected with the woods. So maybe the Zonai people living in these woods had a sense that whatever they built would eventually be knocked over by by the landscape and that the landscape was, in that sense, part of what they were building. It's, it's, it's an interesting idea, at least, but it also doesn't sit particularly well, necessarily, with some of the sort of the, these Mayan and um, Aztec, the Mesoamerican style uh, architecture, in so much as it's quite clear that even though, for example, Mayan uh, cities, as they, as they are found today, are found within forests like this often overgrown it's clear that they managed the forest very carefully you know they, they wouldn't let it encroach on the city as was so we might actually be seeing a, a, a civilization that actually used to manage this whole area and that these trees have simply moved in and messed up the place there's two potentials i guess there one of them is is more in harmony with it with the with the pharaon name with the pharaon region the other one is uh, is a little less uh, less cooperative. Um, we can see here as well that actually people today in this area use, for example, trees and swamp swamp roots grow, uh, when they grow rather large to create quasi natural bridges across uh, across rivers and lakes. So here they've actually used uh, vines to create a bridge that goes across. So maybe that's a vestige of that attitude of living in harmony with with nature in the Faron region. Again, it's kind of hard to say. However, there is uh, an area that I'd now like to go and take a look at, and that is over here. All the way over here, in fact, in the north of the map. Oh, far in the north of the map. <laughs> and it, uh, we're going to start just here, where I've, I've actually laid the travel medallion down. This is going to be interesting. So, here we are at the travel medallion that I strategically placed in the landscape. Because actually, at this point in the map, there's not much else around to, to fast travel to, short of actually going straight to the heart of, of this place here, and I didn't want to do that. Uh, 
we are actually at a very particular place that's also in the shadow of that structure over there and we'll take a look at that in a moment that is actually a um a labyrinth just over there but we'll come back to that in a second this is the beginning of the approach to a very special place and it's marked out by these structures here structures that you see really sparingly in this world uh, in fact these structures as as shown here standing freestanding as opposed to part of for example uh, labyrinths are actually really only seen in the pharaon region these are snake-like lizard-like constructions which if you recall in part four led me to think that maybe the uh, the zonai uh, as then unnamed that the zonai maybe worshipped lizards because the zelfos uh, elect electric arrow shooting lizards have taken up residence in the approach to Dracuzo Lake. And here we have a very explicit series of statues leading us up this, this approach here, this pathway. They slowly change in form until so here we, we see pillars akin to those that we've, we've just seen in the Pharaon region. Uh, slightly shorter, but, uh, but nonetheless very similar. And then here we see two sentinels, just like the ones that we saw in the Farron region just now. Uh, one doing better than the other. One's missing, missing is his head or its head. But we can see again those masks, uh, slightly worse wear in terms of weathering. But then again, they are quite exposed here on the hillside. But the masks, the uh, the wings. Oh, actually, there you go. So there's the mask. Oh, so they're looking outwards. That's interesting. That is, that is very interesting. Maybe they're guard, guarding the, uh, your approach, whoever's approaching up this hill. But unless the two sentinels are here. So this, is, this guy is looking outwards with his back to the pathway. Oh, go away! <laughs> I'm trying to do archaeology. Right, I'm going to deal with these guys so they don't come back. There we go. Uh, looking away from the pathway as you walk up it. So actually that's the hooded back of that one. Um, presumably this guy here has been uh, weathered or had his head knocked off at some point but would have been facing outwards as well. You can see his talons there on the floor. And it's all leading up to this area here where there's this eternal dome of darkness. Uh, I like saying that, eternal dome of darkness, surrounded by this oopy gloopy uh, swamp. If you, if you sit in that, you're going to definitely uh, die within seconds. But again, we see another sentinel just over there. Oh, and I've got too close. I've passed into the darkness, in fact. Now, this is very important because I think this tells us possibly something else about the Zonai people. Darkness. As you pass from light to dark, you pass through a crepuscular environment. And what's another word for crepuscular? Twilight. I think well, that's what's going on here. I think this may well be a hint that these Zonai people, and it, this is a more explicit, actually, reference in the shape of this statue here. You can see its wings that are thrust out behind it, its beak, and its, its, its head is lit up such that you can see through the eyes of the mask or the crown-like structure that it's wearing. I think this may well be a reference to the fact, or to the, to the idea that these Zonai people are connected to the Twili, or the Twilight people of Twilight Princess. Now, there's not, there's not, there's not a lot that that I can that really, in that sense, backs this up, this idea up. Um, so I make space to pick up that torch. Uh, but the, the style of, of, of these masks and the style actually of, for example, uh, uh, this, this, this statue here, for me is actually quite reminiscent of Midna, a character that, that, that is Link's uh, accompaniment through the Twilight Princess game and, uh, and a key figure in that game, almost like a Twilight Twilly uh, equivalent of Princess Zelda herself. Um, Zelda herself, so that's, that's kind of hard to say. Um, and so the fact that you pass into darkness may well be a fairly on-the-nose reference to Twilight. As we, as we enter this space, look at this. These 
huge carved elegant pillars uh, culminate in these monstrous mouths on each side of the path pathway and as we go we are invited to light our path but we're never given any other light we have to feel our way through the ruins to be honest there's not much to see here i mean there is lots to see but it's kind of hard to show you uh, in video form but we see again more references to these bird-like folk these masks and maybe they're simply wearing bird-like masks in fact this is not dissimilar as well to the to the bad guy the uh, the main um antagonist in zelda twilight princess and that is zant himself a uh, uh, uh well an evil member of the Twi'le Twi'le people who wants to invade Hyrule, the realm of light. Incidentally as well, I'm really enjoying now that my costume is glowing with the skeleton. It's like a, it's like a, a Mexican wrestler, um, but uh, a skeleton version. <laughs> All around this island we have the remnants of more Zonai ruins. Here are two more monsters' heads. Uh, we have natural and and uh, carved stonework. We also have a whole range of, of creatures that seem to be quite happy living here. Maybe they are uh, they're sim they're simply adapting to the twilight or to the darkness in a way that, uh, that we cannot. Now within the game uh, you have to explore this this area and eventually uh, find your way to one of the many shrines that dot the map and in fact I'm, I think I'm approaching one of the shrines now. So in the middle over here there is a it's like these two. There we go. In the middle over here there is a uh, a Hinox, which I don't necessarily want to wake up. There he is. Bless his cotton socks. Ah. Oh, oh no, no, I woke him up. So now <laughs> having explored this area a little bit and hinted at Really, that's all I, I suppose I wanted to point out was this this darkness, this eternal darkness element, I think is a key to maybe understanding the Zonai. But now I want to move on to the labyrinth, the uh, North Lomai labyrinth. And in fact, there are a few labyrinths. There's one at the north of the map. There's one down here at the southwest of the map, South Lomai labyrinth. And there's also one up on the northeast of the map which is a little island unto itself, the uh, Lomai Labyrinth Island, in fact. That was not planned. <laughs> I, uh, I did not know it was called Lomai Labyrinth Island until just then. So let's beam over to uh, to the labyrinth that we were just looking at at the bottom of the approach to the uh, the Typhlo Ruins. That's that's what these, uh, these dark ruins are called, the Typhlo Ruins. And again, try to understand what's going on because we've got this weird sort of juxtaposition, juxtaposition in the Farron woodlands of architecture that sits quite well with the with the landscape and with the the Farron area. Oh, I'm a bit cold. Better put on some warm clothes. Oh, I don't want to get out of my glow in the dark, but I don't want to freeze to death either. So let's see. What can we? What can we wear that's fun? I know I put on. I'll put on a, a Lionel mask. Is that any warmer? No? Okay. I'll put on a warm, warm doublet. Oh, still cold. Blimey. Okay. Warm trousers as well. That's better. So, I, li oh, I love that pose as well. That's quite cool. Um, but yeah, so, so in, in, in strong contrast to Faron, what we have here is, is architecture that is unyielding. This is all about squares and blocks and unnatural developments, such as what looks like electrified light. It may be some form of magic in this world, you know, in the, the Legend of Zelda the universe. Uh, who knows? But these look, this looks almost like a, I don't know, a sort of modernist dream. I can imagine someone commissioning this sort of architecture. Uh, in, in, in our world, in a, like a business setting perhaps. And I, this makes me wonder again about, about the nature of the Zonai people. Because, well, first of all, I just wanted to just, just, let's see if we can just get to the entrance of this, uh, this labyrinth that's over here. 
Because actually, at the entrance of these labyrinths, you, you do get a hint, a fairly strong hint, that these are the same people. Because you may not be convinced of that just at the moment, in so much as it, this does look quite drastically different. In fact, look, there's no, there's no, none of that sort of um, Mesoamerican repetition either, the patterns on the walls. This is a different, subtly different architecture. But it is nonetheless punctuated by these monsters' heads, you see? These giant snakes or dragons or whatever they are. There's one at the base, uh, one in the middle and and not quite one at the top, but they're using the same red stone on each level, at the top of each level. So this is the Zonai people again, but is this a different form of Zonai people? Are these people who separated from their Faron cousins and decided to build or experiment in these relatively barren environments with very stark architecture. It's hard to say. The music in these labyrinths is always always has this sort of slightly mysterious tone to it, and so I find myself, uh, in fact, that, that, just in case you can't hear the music, let me just turn it turn it up for you. Yeah, that's probably a bit louder, but it's just a series of of wistful tones with a sort of a a, a, a quizzical melody underlying it and uh, I find myself um, quite naturally wondering what are these things for now in the game they are they they can each one contains a shrine uh, a shrine um, which is linked to the Sheikah people and each one also uh, is related to a, a, a type of clothing in fact and actually we can put them on uh, now and they're called the barbarian clothes so one uh, one labyrinth will have a treasure chest for the barbarian helmet another for, for the barbarian armor and another one for the barbarian trousers even though or leg wraps rather so even though you can't wear them here because it's too cold to wear them I wonder what that means are the is this an indication that perhaps the this is what the zone I did they, they left Faron and deposited their barbarian selves within these labyrinths did they reject a, a, a more naturalistic way of life in, in harmony with the, with the forest? And as I say, uh, begin to experiment with a, a more, well, brutalist, in fact. Brutalist as a, as a form of architecture, that is. Not, that's not to say a quality of life. But a more um, brutalist or modernist form. Maybe, that, maybe someone, some architect or someone like that, got tired of, of having to put up with trees knocking down their monuments and their pillars, and they decided to build this instead. Now this is, this is just one of those labyrinths. In fact, we can, we can very quickly travel to the one in the desert. So this is, this is in, in a cold place, relatively inaccessible place. Uh, if we travel to the, um, uh, the South Lomi Labyrinth, or Lomi Labyrinth, we'll see that this one is in the opposite. This one is in a hot place. So ice, fire, and water, maybe? Maybe that's what's going on, some sort of uh, elemental reflection. So this is the shrine at the center of, of the desert lab uh, labyrinth. Once again, we have this, this electricity or magical lighting that isn't seen anywhere else in the game, only in these labyrinths. And actually in this instance, oh yes, of course, in this instance, I need to climb a ladder to get out. Whew. Each of these labyrinths, incidentally, has also been overtaken by that purple corruption that we've seen elsewhere in the game. It's interesting that these were a target for that, for that corruption, Ganon's corruption. But here we have the, an exterior wall with the, again, the dragon or the snake's mouth at the bottom in the middle and not quite at the top. We have this sort of curtain wall with the red stone in it. And we have the inner walls with this very uniform but very much repeating pattern of stone. What do these things mean? Why build these labyrinths? And also, why build them in relatively inaccessible places as well? Again, this is this is a desert area, but also actually in the map, you have to 
come up out of the de out of the desert, go through what uh, this little canyon that's called the Champions Gate, go around that, and come in from this angle here. They're not. This isn't for 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 regular people to a, to attend to, or to attempt to uh, to enter. This is, well, in in canon, this is actually for you, for Link as the hero to visit. Um, but I wonder. You know, if we discount the shrine in the centre and the fact that Link is meant to be visiting it, is there an element of, of of hiding away or experimenting with letting go of that barbarian nature? Again, if we if we change into the costume that we can wear now because we're not in the cold part of the map, uh, is this what the Zonai people wanted to to bury, to hide at the heart of these labyrinths, potentially? Uh, finally, let's travel all the way up then to the Lomai, Lomi, Labyrinth Islands. There we go. So once again, we have a shrine, and here we can see and feel the fact that we're very much on an island. In fact, we can't leave the labyrinth outside the entrance there. There's just a sheer cliff and a drop-off. If we look straight ahead, see down here, you just, <laughs> there's the sea. So inaccessible, almost to a fault, really. And uh, also, as well, in this instance, again, crawling with. So we have a guardian down there. We have some flying guardians. There's one over there. No, say so two over there. There's one over there. Two over there as well, actually. Um, it's interesting that, that clearly the, uh, Ganon... And his uh, his evil minions figured that this was a a place that was worthwhile um, infesting, especially with all the sludge that you find lying around. But again, the size of this architecture, the uncompromising repetition of the patterns, and the fact that actually you have to work quite hard to see where the wall becomes a door uh, or where a um, where uh, a turning is in fact leading to a corridor as opposed to a dead end like that. Oh, here we go. There's a turning. Oh, a treasure, a treasure chest. Go away. What's in there? Ancient shaft. I'll take it. It's intriguing to me that... Um, that anyone would put so much in it, but you know, clearly this would take a lot of effort and energy, especially if you're building right up to the edge of this this island. In fact, being a perfectly square block of land, was this actually constructed out of the sea? Possibly, possibly. And yet these people, the Zonai people, the Zonai ruins that, that, are, that are left around the, the whole map, uh, seemingly had their origins here in the Faron region. That intrigues me. And there we go. See, the Zonai Ruins as named on the map there. What's going on with them? Are they connected to the Twilight or Twi'li people, Twilight people, uh, as possibly hinted at in the uh, the Tiflo Ruins and the fact that you, you, you can't even approach them without going into darkness? Um, are they... Did they rise out of the sea as possibly indicated here with these these this labyrinth just being plonked perfectly as a as a geometric uh, anomaly in in off to the northeast of the map did they relish extreme temperatures hot and cold or were they trying to deposit their barbarian selves get away from that forest uh, woodland lifestyle and experiment with a new way of life it is hard to know for sure. And hence the purpose of them. As I say, they are called the mysterious Zonai people for a reason. The, you know, the game has been designed with that in mind. But I'm just intrigued by what this narrative, what this, the architecture, what the landscape and what these choices tell us about what the, uh, the good people at Nintendo had in mind when they came up with the Zonai people. See, look, you, you, you could go around for days in this place, getting hopelessly lost with this repetition of architecture. It's actually really rather dull architecture, actually. Now, here we have some thorns that have grown in. I wonder if, if, if uh, 
Let's see if I... Can I burn them? Oh, oh, fireballs, fireballs. Hmm. Oh, I know what would be better if I get my bow out. Uh, no. So, let's see. And... Uh, fire arrow, switch to royal bow. There we go, so set the thorns on fire. Can we see what's up there? Hmm, interesting. Let's, let's continue up these stairs and see. Maybe the thorns... Go away! Oh, fireballs again! Oh no! Oh no! <laughs> I need to change my weapon. There you go. That's better. Up we go. Were they down... Was it down here? Is that where the thorns were? No. Oh. Okay, hang on. One more time. Once more with feeling. Oh, keys, Wayne. Go on, I'll pick you up. Don't want to waste... Uh, waste the uh, wholesale slaughter of uh, animals in the game. So it's not there. Where is it then? Where is the where's the thorns are protruding from? I wonder. So that's just a drop off back down to there. Hmm. It's somewhere below. I guess it must be down. Leg out. Must be down. Down below. I see, I'm reluctant to go down there because it's crawling with guardians, but. <sighs> Let's have a look. I know. Uh... Oh, rats! Oh, rats! Don't! Hmm. Do you know I'm, I can't quite see actually? Oh no no! <laughs> right, I'm gonna have to escape. Escape! Oh no 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 no! <laughs> okay, let's see if we can get to the. Right. A pox on you, guardians! Later's. <laughs> I'm sure that's connected to something, though. That it must be. I mean, this isn't really, I suppose, part of the mystery of the Zonai, but I'm just wondering what's going on there. Hmm. Oh, of course I can climb. Of course I. Uh, sometimes I forget I can climb. Okay, so what's up here then? Oh, a fire sword. Fair enough. Can't carry more melee weapons. As is ever the, the the crisis for Link in Zelda Breath of the Wild. I think we should leave it there, folks. I think uh, this has been an interesting overview of the Zonai architecture as found in this game. And as I say, I, I, I continue to, to be fascinated by this stuff. And I continue to form my theories as to exactly what's going on, in particular with the Zonai people. In, in particular as well, since that relationship between the Guccini, Guccini Plain Barrows and the Faron grass, uh, Woodlands uh, and the Jungle was confirmed in, uh, in that world map as seen in the book Creating a Champion. If you don't know quite what I'm talking about, check out the previous uh, episodes in this mini-series within a series. And, uh, and what do you think? Comment below, let me know what you think. Do my theories hold water? Do you think that actually I'm missing something crucial about the Zonai? I think that the, there's something in, in there, though, in terms of the relationship between the, the woodland, the twi Twi'lai or the Twi'li people from Twilight Princess, and 
this stark contrast in terms of location, but also in terms of architecture. There has to be something in there as far as, uh, as, far as the Zonai people go. Well, I'm just going to avoid that guardian there. As ever, guys, until next time, do take care. Bye-bye.